Live from the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Q at Oracle Open World 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor QLogic with support from HGST, Violin Memory, and Mark Logic. And now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're back to wrap up Dave. Day two, Dave and Stu and David are here. <laughs> David Flores is going to join us. So, let's see, a lot of infrastructure talk today. You know, yesterday was really about cloud and, and applications and you know, from human capital management to ERP to enterprise performance management to the bevy of applications Oracle has. We heard yesterday really about the sort of three layers of cloud that Oracle is going after. The infrastructure as a service layer, the platform as a service layer, and the SaaS pieces, massive, massive collection of, of software in the, in the portfolio. As we know, Stu and David, software leads infrastructure, so Oracle's in a strong position from that standpoint. Having said that, you know, it's like everybody keeps saying, you know, you walk, oh, Oracle's got to change its business model, Oracle's in trouble, Oracle's this, Oracle's that. Um, in a way, Oracle is changing its business model. Uh, not, not in a way, Oracle is changing its business model, it's driving you know, huge uh, uh, effort in the cloud. It spends money on R&D. It's acquired a zillion companies. It's organized those companies in a way, you know, through its fusion initiatives. Uh, it's integrated hardware and software together. It's integrating Sun Microsystems, you know, product portfolio. It's, it's cutting the sort of dead wood, low margin products, focusing on higher margin products. It's achieved operating profits, profits pre-Sun acquisition. It's not growing as fast as it, it wants to grow. It's, it's, its new license revenue is down, its hardware revenue is down, so it's got some challenges there, but it's throwing off cash like crazy. So, David Floyd, I'll start with you. Oracle is changing its business model. Why do people feel as though they're in trouble? Well, <clears throat> they have a fundamentally very sound business, and it's the applications. So, starting from the top, they have applications that people want, they want to Im implement them, they have the databases underneath that, they have middleware underneath that, and they have a, a stack below that. And the cost, to me, the key thing that they're doing is w one of two things. First of all, they're making it easier to consume for the person who buys the application. They're making it easier to put in because the person buying the application doesn't buy infrastructure, he buys the application, and the rest is overhead, and it's, it's cost to him of, of the maintenance and everything else. So if you can find ways, and the cloud is clearly a, one way of doing that, if you can find ways that you can reduce the cost of running that whole stack by, uh, for example, lowering, having a single platform and lowering the cost of the maintenance of it. And if you can find ways that you can produce value quicker so that you can decrease the cycle time of getting that new application out or a new version of that application out, that's going to keep your revenue fine. So you'll be able to at least keep still and grow the value you're creating to your, to your customers and from that, continue to uh, make good profits. Stu, when we come to these shows, <clears throat> we get inundated with messaging. I mean, it's just, sometimes it's overwhelming. And, you know, the world looks to us to sort of peel back the veneer of those, those messages, squint through that and, and sort of come up with the truth. Uh, we heard, you know, we had Mike Workman on today and you challenged him, you know, rightly so, and he said, yeah, yeah, hybrid arrays are just a bolt on to existing spinning disk. And we said, well, wait a minute, there are people, and David, you talked about this as well, that are designed hybrid arrays like a tin tree or a Tegile or, or a Nimble, yeah. you know, from the ground up, you know, properly, let's say. Uh, not that it's improper to throw flash into an existing array. It makes sense to do that, but you kind of run out of controller bandwidth at, at some point. So, so my question to you is, on a scale of one to 10, how much of what we hear at Oracle Open World is sort of real, you know, versus marketing, versus things that will ultimately be uh, delivered 
you know, what's your what's your report card on Oracle? Yeah, so, so Dave, one of the things I, I would give Oracle credit for is I don't hear a lot of uh, what I usually call blue sky marketing. It's like, here's where the future's going to be and we're going to take it there. So we talked about on the intro, in many ways where Oracle gets dinged is, you know, this cloud and big data stuff is exciting and interesting and we're all saying, uh, yeah, welcome to the party. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've all been talking about this for a while. Uh, so when, when Oracle's bringing things out, it, it reminds me of you know, many of the enterprise vendors that uh, you know, they have it shipping in, in customer sites before they're talking about it uh, all that often. So uh, you know, I, I, I give my, my engineering hat on, you know, I like that. From uh, a customer standpoint though, you know, what's the vision of the future? Uh, you know, how are you going to help me deliver uh, my applications faster, as David was saying? And uh, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to see uh, Larry's keynote this afternoon, but uh, you know, in, in many ways, it, the messaging's a little bit old to me. Well, I mean, they have a clear vision of the way the world should be. You know, let's try to summarize that. It's, it's, it's the red stack, so it's Oracle hardware, Oracle's uh, applications, Oracle middleware, Oracle infrastructure, all connected together. Larry talked Sunday about you know, his walks with Steve Jobs and how they used to talk about, he said one of the things we agreed on, he said we agreed on a lot of things, but one of the things we vehemently agreed on, I guess, is this notion of hardware and software being engineered together, you know, something like this, like an iPhone, uh, and it you know, is more reliable. He even said, if you got a problem, if you have a bug, everybody gets that bug. That's a challenge, but it's easier to fix. And that's kind of what the cloud model gives you. I, I guess, I, I remember when, and you guys may as well, when Bill Gates said, basically we're going to churn the company, Microsoft, and go after the internet. I feel like we're seeing a similar moment inside of Oracle where they've said, we're going all in on cloud. We're not going to let the work days and the sales forces, even though Salesforce has been obviously very successful, it's not like Salesforce just came yesterday, but work day starts to hit at the heart of, of Oracle. So what you see Oracle, we've got the sales cloud, we've got the marketing cloud, we've got the HCM cloud, everything's now cloud, 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 mm -hmm. cloud. Um, and a lot of that is marketing, but they're putting, the difference about Oracle is they put a lot of R&D behind it. Yeah. Uh, and they, they have very clear R&D roadmaps, and they incent their people to hit them. There's carrot and stick, it's very clear. Guys like Mike Workman were under a lot of pressure to hit targets, even though he may not have hit them all from a, t a timing standpoint. And that's the thing about Ellison, he's a CTO, so he knows how difficult technology is. It took six, seven, eight years to get Fusion right. So I'm not saying he, Oracle has patient R&D, I think it's actually quite impatient, but there's also a under, deep understanding of technology generally from the, the microprocessor all the way up to the application. Right, David, what's the advantage of that? I mean, what other companies yeah. can say that? I mean, IBM can say that, I guess, but in some ways, Oracle's becoming as impressive, if not more. I wonder if you could talk about that. You, used to, you were at, at IBM in its at, heyday. At IBM, yeah. So you know what I'm yeah. talking about, that, yeah. you know, sand in, business yep. value out. Yep. Uh, sand, <laughs> sand in to make semiconductors, right? Business value out. Well, and, 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 the, and it's uh, uh, code pads in and business value out as well. And I, when you uh, come back to the statement I made that the value comes from the applications and the rest, you can, you can deliver the rest any way you want to. And the quicker you can deliver it, and the, the cheaper you can deliver it, the less it gets in the way, the better from an application point of view. And they start from that premise that they have an application to deliver, and they are finding better ways of doing it. And, so, and if they can find better, faster ways of doing it, then they're, they're going to automatically drive things correctly towards that very clear objective of better, faster, uh, uh, more value for the applications delivered. IBM never had, had, has very strong areas, some very strong areas. It has very strong infrastructure areas and development areas, and it has some application areas where it's strong. But it, it doesn't have the same level of high level applications that really run the business, that, that the CEO has been a part of deciding uh, that that application. They're not an ERP vendor, for it's, example. He's, they're not they're, an ERP no, there's vendor. No, there's no IBM financials. Right. And the only yeah. other company that's anywhere near the same enterprise is, is SAP. Micro, is, well, SAP and Microsoft, those two. Um, yeah, but even Microsoft, in terms of 
enterprise apps. Well, if you think about Exchange and SharePoint and uh, Link and uh, and the it's got infrastructure, right? I well, don't really think well, of those as, as apps. You don't. I think. I guess email. Email, email is, an app, is an app. And, uh, mm. and, is, and, and I guess. they have now an ERP systems. They're getting a lot of traction on. So. Uh, not quite as much as Oracle, I agree, but still way up, So way Infor, ahead. Infor yeah. claims that it's yeah. number three enterprise app vendor, it's a $2.8 billion company. Yeah, you would think with Exchange that Microsoft is, is bigger if you include uh, it's about Exchange. The same. Yes, it's a bit bigger know, than that. Into that. that. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, but they, again, ERP, yeah, I guess there's some uh, Microsoft financials. You know, Microsoft Human they Capital we, Management, yes. right? I mean, no, no, they, those, those aren't the ones. But what I'm saying is, they do have a whole platform in terms of the uh, original uh, Microsoft Windows <laughs> desktop, at least, and they have a whole lot of applications that build on that. So they they have an entree in there. But you're right, Oracle is way ahead, and SAP is next, and then Microsoft uh, behind that. Infor is is in a great place. So if they can do the same sort of thing that, that, uh, that uh, Oracle is doing and put the same sort of resources behind it and do it in that micro uh, vertical way that they're doing it, they have a tremendous potential Well, I think Infor's well. got to go public. Yeah. I mean, they, they yeah. have to. Because yeah. that's like, the, going public is the best marketing event that you can do and they need, yeah. you know, I think it's, it's, you know, they're tapping private equity for their R&D, but they need, more marketing, more resources, more, more get the word out on, on what they're doing. Yep. So Dave, I've got a question for you. Sure. Uh, we saw when Microsoft handed the reins over to Satya Nadella, it's the first non-founder that's the CEO of Microsoft, it's really reinvigorated the enterprise business. Uh, here in the Valley, I think Microsoft's had a lot more relevance than we've seen you know, in, in many years, a lot, a lot of excitement brewing. So, what, what's your take on everything going on in Oracle? I, I know you're on the record of saying that even though Larry is no longer the CEO, he's still you know, chairman of the board and he's CTO, running development and still running a lot of the show. So, I, I totally know, believe, what's going on? I totally believe Safra Katz and Mark Herb when they say nothing's going to change. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, think about it, Ellison, essentially what they did is they split the chairman and the CEO roles, which is good. Com you know, large companies like this should split the chairman and, and CEO roles. I, I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, I, I think, you know, the, 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 you know, the idea that, I think Bill Belichick should, you know, split his role, <laughs> you know? Get somebody, you know. Yeah, let, let, let's not go there. General Bad manager there. and somebody else to do with coaching himself, whatever, so. I mean, I think there's, you know, they're both full-time jobs, but, you know, Ellison's got a legacy and he's not, you know, going anywhere, you know, by choice anyway. And so, I mean, basically the way he operates the company, my understanding is, they, they come in the morning and they, the three of them meet and maybe call another people to the meeting and the meeting doesn't end until it ends. And they go through, I mean, you can see how detailed Ellison is. I mean, he's extremely detailed oriented. I think Saffer's the same way and Hurd is the same way. So they have a huge appetite for, for detail. Um, Larry's always you know, run technology. That's the thing about Ellison. He's, he was the, one of the original guys developing the Oracle database. So that's, you know, Increasingly unique in this business, uh, you know, Andy Grove, long gone, Bomber, okay. You know, you mentioned Watson, Satya Nadella. IBM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Watson's back. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. I mean, IBM's actually had that unique ability. It lost its way there in the sort of early to mid '90s, but IBM actually, because of IBM Research, uh, I really believe IBM Research and its sales culture has always been able to maintain that, that cultural you know, ethos. I think EMC, uh, similarly, is one of those companies that has done that. SAP as well, Hasso, um, you know, is a you know, guiding force. So it's, but it's increasingly rare to find that. So Oracle has that unique culture. As I said before, last year we got a glimpse of what Oracle's going to be like without Ellison. A lot more boring. And this is why I've said I'd love to see Mark Benioff come in and take over. Merge, merge Salesforce into, into Oracle, <laughs> get a true pass. Uh, <laughs> and uh, although Oracle doesn't seem to need it, you know, they've got, they're building that out. You know, they're going in a different direction, so that, 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 that media wish may never happen. Um, I guess, you know, again, big question I have, and we're going to answer this at our Capital Markets event, do the rich keep getting richer? 
in this, in this scenario. We've got an oligopoly, we've got an industry where there's an oligopoly, I've said it for years. You got five, six, seven players that control the chessboard. They make moves, they all got cash. Oracle's got you know, a lot of cash. Microsoft, uh, Google, and Amazon are in the mix. That's kind of interesting. That to me is the big disruptor, is, is Google and Amazon. And, and frankly, I like what Nadella's doing. Um, I guess you got to give Balmer some of that credit, I guess. But it just felt, I felt like Balmer never made the bold moves that needed to be made. And Satya Nadella came in and you know, he, really went he right went after. He went after the markets that were going away. And so yeah, the he, I, he, really, he, he really, he, he kept went, after, yeah. you know, desktop applications, Windows, you know, all the core stuff and, and just, I felt like there was, Microsoft sort of lost its innovative edge and became less relevant. I think Nadella has almost overnight made, Huge. Nadella uh, has made Microsoft more relevant. Cube alum, by the way, Satya Nadella came on at one of the shows and we were like, who is this guy? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, Jeff Kelly pulled the short straw and got to interview the CEO. I wasn't at the show, uh, but, and did a good job. So I, I look at Microsoft as a company that's really in a, in a good position uh, to compete, I think, and, and Amazon as well. But you know, I, I hear Oracle, and to me it, it all starts with Oracle's strategy because Oracle has proven it can execute. It can execute on M&A, it can execute on its roadmap, Sometimes it takes longer, but it executes. It delivers on its, uh, on its it gets a return for its R&D. So when Ellison and Safra and Heard stand up, and they're all saying the same thing. You know, it's clear they're coordinated. It's not just pure messaging, it's strategy. They deeply understand their, and believe in their strategy. Whether you believe it or not, they believe it. And so they're going to, sometimes it's, it's better to execute on a strategy that you know, maybe nobody else around you believes, but you execute on it and you can win. Get that. You know, yeah. just because yeah. everybody doesn't agree with it, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't like it a lot when I, when I, as an advocate for customers and they're just getting pounded with, with Oracle you know, licensing and, and maintenance and you try to help them negotiate you know, through that, you, know, you, 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 you have empathy for those customers, but at the same time, if I had to flip my hat and say, okay, I'm in Oracle's position, what would you do differently <laughs> if you were running Oracle? What, what, what would you be doing differently? Well, and the, the big difference between Oracle, for example, and CA, who bought up all of these companies, is that the value created by those companies, he has actually invested in them and increased the value they've created, as opposed to ripping out all the development, ripping out all the uh, R&D, and just living off the maintenance of things that people had to have because it would cost so much to change it. So he has kept the value flowing, as I mean, opposed to- Oracle is emphasizing social, they're emphasizing the customer experience, so I can't say they're not doing that. I guess I, I mean, I, 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 maybe I'd like to see more of that, but I, there's a lot of it, there's increasingly more of that. In the last two years, last 12 months, there's been a lot of emphasis on on, on customer experience, user experience, cloud, marketing cloud, still a lot of heavy lifting with Oracle. I, I'm not sure there's an answer to reduce that. Um, but Stu, take converged infrastructure, a topic that you know very well. Um, what would you be doing differently if you were Oracle? Don't, don't you think Oracle has the right strategy with its hardware and software engineered together? Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely, Dave, and we talked about this earlier. Building the whole red stack from the application down, as David said, uh, is the right way to do it. Uh, what the challenge is, is it still in many ways leaves people with a silo and they need to have something else uh, to be able to you know, finish off the rest of the solution. But that way, customers aren't completely locked in with Oracle. They've got other partners that they're going to bring in. Uh, there's actually not a bad ecosystem when it comes to uh, you know, the server and storage partners here. Despite that, you know, when Oracle bought Sun, the question was you know, how much are they going to drive that? And you know, the business that we knew as Sun before doesn't really exist. It, it only exists in the Red Stack uh, solution. So uh, yeah, David, you're nodding your head. You want, yep. you want to comment on that? Oh, absolutely. They have been so getting rid of stuff they don't need. And they, they focus on that stack. It's from soup to nuts. And one of the things which is interesting to me, if you take their super cluster, which is a very big, very expensive uh, piece of uh, hardware, if, if you look at the core value, the core value is that they can deliver each quarter one update from soup to nuts, and they can install it. 
and they get all of the highest value of the application all the way down. You compare that to the previous generation of stacks, it would take two, three years before the application could actually be put in on top of all the other changes that had to be made. Yeah, uh, and, and they're going to reduce that from three months to two months to one month. Yeah, it's a great point, David. As you said, the customer only needs to focus on the application itself, where if you take other converged infrastructure solutions, it's great that I can remove the silos right. and say, let me update you know, this converged infrastructure platform, but I still have the application on top of it. And even if I make it invisible, it's still two pieces in, in Oracle puts that down to a single managed entity, Absolutely. which is what you've been beating the drum on for the last year or so. <laughs> so, so, so the big, you know, and, uh, Andreessen, Mark Andreessen came out with an article, you know, a couple years ago now, I think, said, you know, none of my startup companies buy Oracle software or SAP software or buy from EMC. Um, and while that's true, uh, it's kind of not true because they probably, a lot of them use Salesforce. Exactly, yeah. Which is yeah. powered by Oracle. Uh, Oracle claims 19 of the top 20 SaaS players run on Oracle. Um, Workday does not. I know IBM has a lot of SaaS, so I, I don't know. I don't think oh, IBM's they, running they, on, on, they, on They have on Oracle. the Oracle in there, of course they do. Yes, they bought, 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 bought software. Bought, bought companies that are Absolutely. running on Oracle, so yes. that's, that's not gonna probably change true, things. right? Yeah. Why change that? Yeah. Um, so, in fact, they may be doing business. So, but to me, the big blind spot could be to the extent that industries are transforming with born in the, the, the cloud, born data-driven, mobile-first applications that bubble up on the edge. You know, that, that, that disruptor from the low end that we talked about um, with uh, CEO Scality. Um, that is a potential blind spot, but that, you know, it's got to seep into the Global 2000. Oracle owns the Global 2000 and it's got a great database. You know, Absolutely. It's that simple. It works. And the, yes. the strategy of, hey, you own the database, you, you're going to oh. own everything own around it. Own the middleware, own the application. And, yes. and that was a vision set forth. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what Larry meant. He's maybe made a promise to himself 30 years ago that I'm going to basically get a toehold with the database and then I'm going to own the world. I, I, yeah. well, he did, he went broke, didn't he? Very, very close to going broke. Uh, right at the beginning, very, very close indeed, within a few months. But one of the other, you talked about the bottom-up area. The Internet of Things, uh, yeah. that's changing, that's going to be a huge volume increase of data coming in. And that again is something that Oracle have got to look at because that's going to become increasingly important and I'm sure that's affecting their strategic thinking is that they've got to be in the cloud, they've got to be close to where that data is going to come in if they're going to intercept it in some sort of way or be close to it. Uh, so all of these things, they are actually positioning themselves to be able to take advantage of. And that, to me, that's one of the biggest, you know, there's so many big changes going on. That huge influx of data coming in there um, is going to, change the way that companies organize their, how they, get it, the, how they get data, because most of the data internally at the moment comes from themselves, is going to increasingly come from outside and move towards the cloud. So Oracle has to change, Info has to change, all, all the people have to change to be closer to where the data is coming from. Yeah, so that Internet of Things is another potential blind spot, it has architectural implications and and market formation, you know, tectonic shift implications. But again, I, I, it's happening fast, I guess, uh, and it's happening with uh, some new players. Yes, but, yeah. but You're right. not yeah. at a pace nope. that they that can't keep Oracle up. can't yeah. say, "All right, this is what we need to do." The other thing Oracle's doing is it's it's buying industries. You know, one of the Infor's unique advantages is that last mile, the micro industry uh, targeting micro verticals. Micro yeah. verticals. Um, but I see Oracle you know, grabbing some of those industry specializations within oh, whether absolutely. it's telco, yes. manufacturing, yeah. et cetera. So you know, it's, it's everywhere. You know, it's in hardware, it's in software, it's, it's claiming pass. And get, the true pass guys are going to say, well, it's not really pass. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Um, but you know, that's like a saying, oh, it's not really cloud. Okay, well, <laughs> if the guy buys it, you know, it quacks. <laughs> right. All right, I think that's a wrap, guys. Uh, last thoughts, too? Any, any closing thoughts on uh, day two? 
Yeah, uh, Dave, as you said, you know, PaaS is something that we expected to hear a little bit more about. Uh, so some good progress on some of the cloud pieces. Whether or not it's all that cloudy, I think that, that was a good comment if, if customers buy it. And you know, Oracle just extends the red stack out and uh, they've got plenty of customers. Uh, some good excitement here at the show, uh, especially when they've uh, got some good giveaways. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's always an interesting show for me because it's you know, 65,000 people but in many ways, it's so many little pieces all over the place, um, you know, spread out all over San Francisco. I mean, there's no way you can get a hotel room if you didn't book it months ahead of time. Uh, but you know, very important show. But uh, you know, it, you know, it's not like Docker that's you know heating up the world and everybody's buzzing about it. Uh, but uh, you know, throwing off a lot of cash, as you always said, and uh, you know, driving driving a lot of uh, things forward. Yeah, it's kind of like the Patriots used to be, Stu. You know what I mean? <laughs> they got, it, it, initially people were rooting for them and then they got good and it came, became too you know, good. over and over, too good, and then everybody yeah. said, so, oh, so is, is I'm the, rooting against the favorite. Yeah, right? Dave, is, is the database market like the Patriots? Because even though the Patriots are the Patriots this year, their division stinks. So they're probably yeah, going to well, win the division and then get knocked out. But so after last night's two, I'm not so sure they're going to win anything. <laughs> yeah. That was embarrassing, yeah, wasn't it? That was bad, so. Uh, <laughs> but I think you made the comment earlier on. The, it, the rich are getting richer, mm. they're throwing off, throwing off cash. Uh, what's happening in the, in the world is fewer and fewer people are part of that decision making, part of that process. And it's, it's as you say, the, the placing bets where they own the money and the money is coming back to them uh, is, is where the world is going in high, in, in high tech. Mm. The only interesting thing to me about that scenario is, is that money going to be US money? Or have Snowden so besmirched the reputation of the US that we're going to see clones appearing in other parts of the world, in China or in Australia or, or in Europe? Well, I think China's a lock. Yeah. You're already seeing that. I think you're seeing that with you know, Alibaba Japan, and, and others. Yeah, yeah. But China in particular, you know, is proving out, particularly with, with, with social, uh, and and now retail, that it can sort of replicate, um, and the balance of the world. You know, you know, NSA has the biggest data center in the world. I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> all right, we're a wrap on day two. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Let's see. We will be back at at uh, the Cube Q tomorrow. Briefly, we got a kickoff that Stu's doing, and we also at uh, the Cube C in the Cisco booth uh, pretty much all day tomorrow. So check out siliconangle.tv for the schedules, check out live.siliconangle.tv. As always, check out wikibon.org. We got some new research up there on Oracle uh, just today. Uh, and check out siliconangle.com for all the news. We're at CrowdChat, crowdchat.net slash OOW14 is the CrowdChat. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>